My name is Adam Fawcett, and I'm going to be giving you the uh, real-time demonstration of the Morning 10 Whip Fit exercise program used at Nichols Brothers Boatyard in Freeland for nine years now. Uh, it's proven to be very effective in reducing sprain and strain injuries. And um, this is what your timer looks like. It's uh, 11 or 12 exercises, 52 seconds each. And um, I'm just going to do it for you in real time. I'm going to teach it and talk it as I'm doing it, much like I do uh, in the yard when I'm training exercise leaders. If people like that to do it, the sheet can be on the floor in front of you. These are 52 seconds per exercise, and we're just going to get it started just like we do. The bell rings at 8 o'clock, everybody's in position in their circle ready to go, and we get started. So feet are nice and square, shoulder width. The first warm-up is the easiest warm-up in the world. It starts with a nice long stretch overhead. Reach them overhead, squeeze your butt, pull your abs in, get really long and stretch, get a good ah, and then just let those arms swing. It's called the master's exercise. Sometimes it's called mini squats, and it's super simple. Notice how the body's staying upright, weight's coming down through the heels, through the whole foot. Breathing is natural. There's nothing much to do here. It's good to let your body know what's coming. This compresses the joints and the bones a little bit, gets the shoulders warmed up. There are actually four different moves that warm up shoulders in this routine because <clears throat> shoulders are a highly injury prone area. We're going to go from this warm up master's exercise into what I call star squats. These are sometimes called prisoner squats. If you can be slightly wider, lace your fingers, bring your head back into those laced fingers. Pull your shoulders back, elbows back. When a squat, your butt needs to go back first. The squat does not come forward like that. Butt goes back. The weight's on the heels. You can tap your toes. Long spine. If you have a long spine and you get your weight back into your heels and into your posterior chain, your life is going to be better. Your injuries will be less. You will be more injury proof and injury resilient. Take them down. Squeeze them up. You squeeze that butt a little bit at the top. Keep the abs engaged. Keep those cooking. Awesome if you're feeling good. A pulse down here a little bit. Get them working like that. Six, five, four, three. And let those go out of there. Very nice. We're going to warm up the wrists. Wrists can be warmed up very effectively by doing rotations. Okay, now there's three different things we do here. We roll the wrists forward. I like to gear them sometimes like that. Get a little more range out of them. Um, and then the other direction. This is the dominant paradigm. Make sure you get them both ways. I count somewhere between seven and 10 each direction. And then we do an ancient Chinese exercise called iron hands. This is really effective for stretching the nerve tissue and the tendons in those wrists. There's a number of other things you can do for the wrists. Notice this is a full minute for every exercise, for every target muscle group, joint group that we're taking care of. Those hands are pulled back, reaching for the far walls, not a lot of effort. Just warming up those wrists. Five, four, three, two, and one. Very good. Now, the next thing we do is called stick ups. Stick ups are high rows. A high row goes like this with the elbows 90 degrees off the body. And a stick up comes up here more like this. It comes back to here. Okay. Both of these have the intention of warming up your shoulder blades stabilizers, your large upper back muscles. So they're going to be most effective if as you pull back, you really contract those muscles across the back. They don't have to go crazy far back, the elbows can stop right about the plane of the back, but you do want to squeeze those muscles, whether you're doing rows or stick-ups. The exercise leader has license on this. You can also do what's called um, Ws, where they come back like a row, and then they W back. Really good for shoulder mobility and stability. Both are super important. Next thing we're going to do is the neck. Now, there's a lot of things we can do for the neck. Um, I like a forward chin circle where the face stays flat and you move that chin out in a circle like this. Okay, now, not all the guys like to do this because it looks a little silly, but it's super effective. I get about five or six times each direction. Chin went that way first and then it goes this way. And then it is absolutely effective to do a static stretch. I put the right hand behind the back Keep my head nice and tall and bend that, this ear gently to this shoulder. Doing this over time, one minute a day, well, 30 seconds on a side or less, really helps to open up those necks. Uh, 
the side of the neck muscles, sternocleidomastoid, and upper traps, and levator scapulae. Very gently, and then let that out of there. Shrug them out a little bit, super good. Next thing we do is very healthy for shoulder rotator cuffs. It's called a hitchhiker. It looks like this. I often train this by first having the guys hold one elbow still in front. Because if I keep that elbow in front of me in that sagittal plane, here's the business right there, and really turn it out. It's more effective than if I have them out to the side. Now, if you have guys doing them out to the side like this, correct them gently, but don't worry about it. It's still a good shoulder rotator cuff warm rubber. But they're better right in front of you, comes across, then out like you're doing the cut sign, and peel those out. That's the business. How far can you get those forearms outside of vertical? pushing the internal, external rotators against the internal rotators of the shoulder rotator cuffs. Highly effective. Put some squeeze on those wrists and we'll let them go. We're gonna do lunges. Lunges are highly functional move. Shoulder width, this knee is right over that ankle. I don't want it buckled in. I'm tall through the top of the head and I'm coming down. I got a shoulder width. My back foot is up on the toe. I'm driving this heel. This knee stays pretty well over that ankle. Drop them straight down like I'm on elevator. I want to engage the quads and the glutes, and as many muscles in that leg as I can. This is the leg doing the most work. This back hip flexor is getting a good stretchy warm up. All right, we switch those out at 30 seconds. There's no timer on that because it's 30 seconds on a leg. So the exercise leader has to make that switch at around, it's actually around the 22 second mark because there's only 52 seconds on a side, so that would be 26 seconds. Switch them to about 26 seconds. All right, those are warm. Now you can swing them. Now this is a really excellent exercise. I dump all my weight into my left leg. My right leg is free. Handshake, right hand, leg back. Switch them like this. Let them swing. That hip's nice and warmed up from the lunges and squats. Now that joint can hang loose, open up. Let those muscles swing and stretch. This is also dynamic balance and one-legged practice. A lot of one-legged work happens in the yard. Switch that out. Pour your weight down into that leg. Set this up like this. Let them swing. Your eyes are out on the floor in front of you for balance. If you're not good at this in the beginning, you can touch in the back, touch in the front. You can touch in the back, and touch in the front. Once you've got it, that dynamic swing will really pay off well. You can also do these in front of the body like this on different days, not all on the same day. Mix them up day to day. All right, squat to stand. This is a very powerful athletic exercise. I'm gonna do mostly profile. I'm wider than shoulder width. I push my butt back into that posterior chain, which is how you wanna squat all the time. Fingers go under the toes. Now this is a mobility drill. So I'm extending my spine up, trying to get as tall as I can, pushing that end range of motion on those hips. Should be a little unpleasant. And then part B is a hamstring stretch. I round, straighten those knees up, round the back, and let that hang. You get about four of these in the 52 seconds. Get really tall, and then push that up. Very powerful mobility exercise. If you've got motivated people, you can have this reach. I reach up, open that thoracic spine, reach up, look that way, look right out of that fingertip, and then round it out and let it hang. And then come on up out of there. Very good, that's called squat to stands for hamstrings. We then do either abs or calf raises. Calf raises, I'm gonna do calf raises today because calf raises are super effective. Good muscle group that needs some work, keeps those ankles warmed up, loosed up, and juiced up. Now, I do like a calf stretch against a wall or something in the yard, but you can't always find it. So sometimes we'll do 10 of these and we'll set up a stretch like this, okay? Now that's pretty good, but a calf stretch is much more effective if you can really push into it because it's a very strong muscle and it needs a little bit of pushing. Four exhales on a side will get you close to 20 seconds. I have also typically had guys put a foot up on a, on a pallet or something like that and stretch that calf like that. Calf stretching is super effective for a lot of things. All right, that's a full minute spent on calves. Two left to go. We do ballistic arm swings. Okay, now watch how this goes. Palms are down when they're forward, and they're forward when they're back. And it's very, not a lot of energy, it's just letting them swing. Ballistics, you don't want to do cold, but we're not cold. We've been warming up for nine minutes. These muscles are nice and warm. Let them swing, and before the minute's out, we like to grab them back here, 
and pull those shoulders down and back, stretching those pecs. Most all the work in the yard and in the office has us down here like this. It's super helpful to stretch that front of that body out, get that thoracic spine upright, pull the head back, look up a little bit, drive them back. Ah, that should feel really good. I like to separate my thumbs like that to head forward to extra rotation, stretching those pecs, shoulders all the way across there. One more thing, I usually combine two things into here. I call this the sumo suspension bridge squat. Stiff legs, feet nice and wide, pointed out. I can stretch my groins like that, sit back once again into that posterior chain. That means I'm back here, I'm not up on the toes. And then we're going to go into a lateral squat, super effective. So I push my butt back into that heel, reach down here, stretching that groin all the way back up. This leg stays stiff. If we get three or four of these on a side, it goes pretty good. I do notice that the guys in the yard tend to appreciate this one and do it pretty well. Watch, if they're coming up on the toe like that, that's not as effective as if that butt's back and you're in that heel posterior chain. The posterior chain, loading the posterior chain is one of the best keys to preventing injury in the yard on any workplace situation that you'll ever have. That's the morning 10. Work it. It'll work you. Super effective injury prevention.